how do you how do you create feeling with inert materials? Now the Greeks knew how to do it. I've got a picture of the charioteer, 500 BC. When I saw it, when I was 40 years old, I started crying, and I thought, that's what I want to do. I want to be able to build a building that makes people moves them 500 years from now. What is it that made me want to come into this profession? In high school, I took shop and built things, and I did well in that and loved it, making things with your hands. I looked at the professions one could go into, and I remember looking at architecture at that time, and architecture curriculum was to build a Cape Cod house or something, you know, it was, it was not very interesting, so I closed the book on that and didn't even pay attention. But I did go to the lecture series on Friday nights at the University of Toronto. And there was a guy from Finland showing his buildings and furniture, and that guy turned out to be Alvar Aalto. So I was kind of peripherally interested. I didn't know I was interested. I was intrigued by the way things were built. When I got to L.A., I went to night school at L.A. City College. I took a ceramics class with Glenn Lukens, who was a well-known ceramist. And he's the one that, after a year, told me not to stay in ceramics. He said, you're not gonna like this. I think you should look at architecture. He was building a house by Rafael Soriano. And I visited the site, Rafael Soriano was telling people to move beams around and it was kind of exciting. I guess I, my eyes lit up. The first buildings I designed looked like Rafael Soriano. He got to me. <laughs> my mother took me to concerts when I was a kid in Toronto. And I'm still to this day very interested in the topic, buildings for music, because you get a relationship between the orchestra members, so they hear each other. And it's comfortable, they hear each other in a way that is uh, substantial and uplifting. You create a relationship between the orchestra and the audience that's palpable, that they both feel. If you do it right, they both feel it. So music stuff is really exciting, and my belief that people talk to each other through the arts led me to the Devon Orchestra with Daniel Barenboim. The, he and Edward Said created an orchestra where Palestinians, Syrians, Lebanese, Egyptians play in an orchestra with Israelis. And so I designed their 700-seat concert hall in Berlin as a gift to the orchestra. And it really works. So that's the music stuff. <laughs> the art stuff is also there. Uh, Bill Bao was a working relationship with a genius museum director, Tom Krenz. And it's that collaboration that led to the project that we built which was a very inexpensive building compared to museum buildings. Bill Bow was built for $300 a square foot. So it's, uh, and it came in slightly under budget. And its return on investment has been beyond everybody's wildest dreams. I mean, if you start to use curves, you think it's more expensive than a box, right? But we developed with our French friends who build airplanes. With their software, we were able to demystify shapes so you could build them cheaply. And we built it like a warehouse, a big warehouse. Every contract has a 15% layaway for, for change orders. If you show people exactly what to do, demystify the way you build something, they don't get the 
So we did a 76-story tower in Manhattan. The exterior skin is all wiggly wobbly. Everybody would say that's too expensive. We built it with zero change orders. So the amount of money that you saved actually went into the building instead of waste. So we experiment with the feelings generated by materials. In Bilbao, since it was a museum and not a lot of windows, the exterior skin became the building. It's a, a rainy climate, and so stainless steel went dead. Stainless steel is exciting in California because you got a lot of sunlight. By accident, I had a piece of titanium and I looked at it and I put it out on a post and it rained and it turned golden and it felt right and so I said that's what we got to use. When you go to Bilbao and it's, it's cloudy skies the thing turns golden and it's really beautiful. In Arles, France, we're just completing a building for a special lady, Maya Hoffman, and it's where Van Gogh did Starry Night. And I've always wanted to paint on a facade with natural light. And we built blocks that are covered with stainless steel and they're set at slightly different angles. And when you go there with the sun, it changes all day long. So it's like a watercolor and it was beautiful. 